Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Micah and this channel is dedicated to learning, teaching, and discussing everything about cybersecurity. So today we're back in Try Hack Me and we are tackling the benign room. And basically we are investigating a compromise, figuring out which host it is, which users are involved, and figuring out exactly what the threat actor did in this scenario. So without further ado, let's get straight into it. So first off, as always, we're going to connect to our VPN and I'm going to run sudo open VPN and then my VPN profile for try hack me. And as you see, we are connected and we can double check by running IF config just to make sure. And you see this tunnel IP address here. And if we refresh this room, it should pop up right here as well. All right. Awesome. So the first question is to, uh, are we connected with the lab and we can hit complete it because we are going down to this scenario. Um, one of the clients IDS indicated a potentially suspicious process ex execution indicating one of the hosts from the HR department was compromised. Some tools related to network information gathering slash scheduled tasks were executed, which confirmed the suspicion. Due to limited resources, we can only pull the process execution logs with the event ID 4688 and ingested them into Splunk with the index win event logs for further investigation. So the network is divided into three logical segments. This will help with the investigation. We have the IT department, which is James, Moyne, and Katrina. We have the HR department, Haroon, Chris, and Diana. And we have the marketing department, which is Bell, Amelia, and Deepak. So the first question is how many logs are ingested from the month of March 2022. And we're going to get that IP address here and plug it into our, your, our address bar up here. And we should be connected to the Splunk instance that Try Hack Me has spun up for us. And I don't believe we need a password or a username. We should just get right into it. All right. So we're going to go to search and reporting. And we should be greeted with a familiar interface for investigations, which is the search app. And in the search bar here, we see, um, I believe our index was when event logs. So we can go ahead and copy that. And we're going to do index equals in quotations. Oh, let's make this a bit bigger. Index equals when event logs and remove that space. And I believe the time uh, span was, um, March of 2022. So let's go ahead and configure our time span here, go to date range between 22, uh, five, right? No, it was March six. I don't know. June, sorry. March is April, May. <laughs> here we go. March. And we can start at the first day, 301.22, all the way down to the last date is 31. All right, so now we're in March of 2022. We go ahead and hit um, search. And we see the amount of events right here at the top left corner. Let's go ahead and copy this and paste this into Try Hack Me. And remove the comma. And that's the correct answer. All right, so next question. Imposter alert. There seems to be an imposter account observed in the logs. What is the name of that user? So again, we have our nine users from the IT, HR, and marketing department. So let's go ahead and uh, use the, I believe is the dupe command, the dupe command. And we are going to deduplicate the usernames from this log output. Oh, and then we need to cast this into a table. All right, so we see uh, we have a few entries here, 11, 11 entries to be exact. So we know none of these are actual users. Then we have system that makes 10 and then one imposter. So we see we have two entries for Amelia. This second one is using a one as an I. So 
pretty obvious that this is the imposter. Hit submit, correct answer. All right, so which user from the HR department was observed to be running scheduled tasks? So let's go, let's remove that from our query and then we're going to do it. And I believe it's built in, but I, I like doing it just for, uh, just have a visual representation of the logic. So index equals when event logs and we're going to search for the process or command uh, schedule tasks. I believe it's SCH tasks dot exe. Perfect. And we're just going to enter that into our query. Uh, might have to be capital. I don't know. All right, cool. So we have some events returned here. Uh, let's go ahead and use the dedupe command once again. We're going to dedupe by username because we're trying to figure out which user, uh, which AR user, HR user is running scheduled tasks. So if we go down here to username, we can see we have Moin, Katrina, James, and Chris. If we go back to try hack me, I believe that those first three are part of the IT department. And then we have Chris, which is in the HR department. So we know that Chris dot four is the correct answer. He's the one running scheduled tasks from the HR department. That's correct. So which user from the HR department execute a system process or LOL bin, lol bin, to download a payload from a file sharing host. So going back to Google, Google's always your best friend. Uh, let's just look for LOL bins. I believe it's LOL boss. It's a project that um, defines what LOL bins are commonly used for attacker uh, tactics. So a uh, low bin is basically living off of the land binary is something that's built into Windows or Linux or Mac that attackers, threat actors can use for malicious purposes. And we're looking for something that can be used for download, right? So straight off the bat, we have this app installer.exe. We have this bits admin, cert req, and one of my favorites, cert util. So I already know the answer is cert util. Uh, you can see me using this in some of my other videos. I think check out hacked and some other ones um, where I'm actually acting, I guess it's a threat actor, but uh, cert util can be used to download files from the internet pretty easily. So let's just Google this real quick. Oh, they have examples in on the website we were just at. So you can see some examples of how you can download things from the internet. Uh, we're not gonna do this right now, but it's, I highly recommend that you go into LOL bins and just play around, see what's in here. Uh, Cause you might see it in your actual environment, something doing some weird things. And then you can, you know, kind of go back and say, oh, I know where that is. So anyways, uh, actually we can search for cert util as well just to make sure and actually yeah we get one event returned which is pretty interesting uh, and we can see that the actor is using cert util to download uh, this benign.exe from this control c.com domain so that's pretty interesting. So uh, which user from the HR department executed an LOL bin to download a payload? Who was this? Haroon. So that should be our answer. To bypass the security controls, which system process LOL bin was used to download a payload from the internet? So yeah, I sorry, I jumped ahead a bit, um, but we know that is certutil.exe. So what was the date that this binary was executed by the infected host? Let's go back to Splunk and we can get the event time that this uh, this low bin was executed on the machine. And I believe we just need the date, not the time. So year, month, date format, that should be correct. 
So which third party site was accessed to download the malicious payload? And we already have that from our output from earlier. Uh, I believe it's just control C.com. What is the name of the file that was saved on the host machine from the C2 server during the post exploitation phase? And we have that here again, benign.exe. The suspicious file downloaded from the C2 server contained malicious content with the pattern THM dot dot dot. What is that pattern? So we can actually uh, navigate to this website. I wouldn't recommend doing anything inside of your actual machine. We're going to be using browser link, which is basically like a, uh, a sandbox of sorts for your browser. And we're going to navigate to that website now. All right, hopefully we're first in line in this queue and we are perfect. And I can't zoom in, but the answer is right there. You see this THM string. Perfect. So what is the URL that the infected host connected to? And again, we have that answer already for us. All right, perfect. I know that was short, sweet, and to the point, but um, I know that you guys like the analysis and uh, triage videos and working in Splunk and Let's Defend, so I'm trying to make more of these. So hopefully you enjoyed it. Hopefully you learned something. Um, definitely check out this room. If you don't already have a Try Hacking subscription, it's $10 a month. You get tons and tons of content for $10, which is a pretty amazing value. Uh, so go ahead and, you know, check it out. There's some free stuff as well, so you don't have to pay for it, but I definitely recommend that you, you know, spend that $10 to level up your skills, especially if you're trying to either, you know, just practice what you've learned, either in school or your self-learning, or you just want to challenge yourself and learn some new things. But either way, it's a great value. And again, hopefully you learned something today. Stay blessed and I'll see you in the next time.